So Linux Mint comes with a solid set of pre-installed software, but everyone has unique preferences and requirements. So by installing additional software, you can customize your system to fit your workflow, your hobbies, and your interests. Uh, Linux Mint includes a lot of essential applications, but for me, I require specialized tools and advanced software that I need for specific tasks, such as video editing, graphic design, and system management. Uh, the Linux community is vibrant and consistently developing new software. Uh, so by exploring and installing this additional applications, you can benefit from the collective efforts of the open source community. So the beauty of Linux Mint is its flexibility. You have the freedom to shape your system to match your individual needs and your preferences. So today I'm going to recommend 10 applications that I always add to a fresh install of Linux Mint. So the first one up, number one, is Krita. Krita is a free open source painting program designed for digital artists. And although Krita is a powerful digital artist tool, I also use it in place of Photoshop for graphic design and photo editing. And just like Photoshop, it uses layers and masks, which allow you to separate different parts of your design work, so it makes it easier to edit them and apply effects without affecting other parts. It has a huge collection of brushes, and you can even create your own custom brushes to suit your style. You can arrange the tools and panels in a way that works best for you, making your workflow more efficient. And another great thing about it is it has vector tools, which help you create clean, scalable graphics, unlike raster images. So these are great for illustrations and comics and things like that, but also exporting to SVGs if you want to use it for something that's scalable, making large uh, posters or something like that, or you know, even if you're going to be using it for a laser, it, that you have great options there. Um, it does animation. It supports 2D animation, so you can create frame-by-frame -frame animations directly within the program. And uh, it has plugins, so you can extend its functionality. Uh, if you're a programmer, you can even write your own plugins using Python. And the interface is user-friendly and clean, making it easy to get around. And I've been using Krita for quite some time now, and it's, it's a wonderful program. So number two is Free File Sync. Free File Sync is a free program that helps keep your files in sync between different devices. It's an easy way to make sure your files are always up to date and safe. So here's how it works. It, basically, you pick the folder that you want to keep in sync. For example, you might, I might choose a folder on your computer and a folder on an external drive. And then Free File Sync checks both folders to see if there are any differences. It looks for new, changed, or deleted files. Uh, it, once it finds the differences, it updates the folders so they match. So this means it'll copy new or changed files and delete any files that are no longer needed. So it shows you a clear visual representation of the differences between your folders. So you can sync multiple folders at once, which will save you time. So it keeps track of changes so you can go back to previous versions of your files if you need to. So Free File Sync is a great tool for making sure that your important files are always backed up and up to date. So it's easy to use and helps keep your files and data safe. So number three is Local Send. Local Send is a free and open source app that lets you share files and messages with any nearby device over your local network. So it's like having a private network for sharing stuff without needing an internet connection. So the way it works is you install Local Send on both devices that you want to share. So you can share uh, files or text with a desktop to a, a, a tablet or a phone or anything like that. It works across all uh, all operating systems as well. It works on uh, Linux, of course, Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS. So basically what happens is, so you make sure that all the devices are connected to the same Wi-Fi network. That's important because LocalSend uses the local network to communicate. So when you open up the app, you'll see options to send or receive. You choose the files you want to send or share, or you want to send a text, and then you pick the other device that you want to share with. So the other device, when you select the device, the other device will get a notification to accept the file or the text. So you don't need an internet connection to share these files, just a local network. The uh, application has a simple and user-friendly interface, it's, so it's really easy for anyone to use. So it's a great tool for quickly uh, sharing files between devices. Now there is one caveat to this. If you are using a Linux machine and you aren't able to see other devices in the app, 
it could be that your firewall is preventing it. So if you want to send, sometimes when you want to send files or receive files, you have to turn off your firewall and then uh, once you receive or send the file, turn it back on again. Number four is KeePass. So KeePass is a free program that helps you store and manage all of your passwords in one secure place. So it's like having a digital notebook that keeps all your passwords organized. So the way that this works is when, when you first open KeePass, you create a database. So this is like a special file where all your passwords will be stored. So for each account you have, you add an entry and then you save the website name, your username, your password, notes, and things like that. And then what you do is you, you keep the whole database secure with a master password. So basically you're storing all the passwords to like websites and whatnot, and then all of those are being kept in a master database with one master password. So all you have to do is remember one password to access all of your other passwords. And so it uses strong encryption to keep your passwords safe also. So um, if you want to create a random password, it will do that for you as well. So you just open up the password generator and it'll create one uh, using any different kind of algorithm that you select. The nice thing about it is it keeps it all in one database file. So you can keep your password database on a USB drive, take it with you wherever, wherever you go, and you can open it up on another machine that has KeepPass. So this is a great tool for keeping your password safe, making it easier to manage all of them. Just remember to create a strong master password. And one great thing about this that I like personally is this is not stored on the internet where it would be vulnerable to hackers. This is stored on your local machine. Number five is Simple Screen Recorder. I believe I've shown this in a previous video, but it bears repeating. So Simple Screen Recorder is a free and easy to use program. It allows you to record everything that's happening on your computer screen, like a video game, a tutorial, or a presentation. So when you open the program, uh, you, it's just it's very simple to, to use. I mean, you see a simple user-friendly interface. So what you have to do is choose what you want to record. So you can uh, choose to record your entire screen or a specific window or a selected area. So you can also decide if you want to include audio from the microphone or system sounds or, or whether or not you even want to include the cursor movement. So after you set all this stuff up, you just click Start Recording. And then Simple Screen Recorder will start capturing everything that's happening on your screen. And then when you're done, you hit the Save Your Recording or you hit the stop recording button and it automatically saves it to a folder that you specify. So some of the cool things about Simple Recorders, it supports different video formats. You can choose the one that works best for you. Um, it's really fast and efficient, so it doesn't. it's never slowed my computer down while recording. And also the great thing about it is there's a preview window, so you can see a preview of your recording while it's happening so you know if everything is working correctly. The interface is, is straightforward, so it's really easy for anyone to be able to use. So Simple Screen Recorder is a great tool for capturing video, whether you're making tutorials, recording gameplay, or sharing something cool. It's a handy program to have. In fact, it's the program that I'm using right now to record my screen. Number six is Digicam. Digicam is a free and open source program that helps you manage your photos. So the way it works is you, you import your photos from a camera, phone, or an other device into Digicam. And then it helps you organize them into albums. And then you tag the files with keywords. So, and it also has some editing tools to enhance your photos. So you can adjust colors, crop, and rotate, and apply cool effects. So what you do is you, you create albums, you add the tags, and then you can use features like face recognition, geotagging to help keep them organized and easy to find. And then it also allows you to share your files directly from Digicam to social media. And some of the cool features is it, it has these tools that let you fine tune your photos you know, with some simple editing, but it also has uh, face recognition, that'll help you tag people automatically. Uh, you can add location information with geotagging so you know where the photos were taken. Um, and then it also does batch processing. You can edit multiple photos at once and that saves a lot of time. So I've been using Digicam for years and it's great for anybody who loves photography and wants to keep their photo collection organized. 
So number seven is convert now. Now this program really doesn't need a lot of explanation. Basically what it does, it, it uh, converts different units like meters to feet, dollars to euros. I use this application every day because I do a lot of drafting and I do a, a lot of 3D printing and printing on my laser and whatnot. So I'm using this application all the time. I would be lost without it. But it's a great program. It, it, it converts like 200 different units of measurement and 30 different currencies. Uh, it's customizable. Uh, you can you know, organize it to units according to your priorities. It's got a built-in calculator. So uh, yeah, it's just a great tool that I think everybody would benefit from. Number eight is Synapse. Synapse is a powerful application launcher for Linux. So its purpose is to help you quickly find and launch applications, files, and other things on your system. And Synapse supports plugins as well, and so that'll allow you to extend its functionality. For example, you can use plugins to play music and search the web or execute terminal commands. Uh, you configure it to run at startup, so uh, it'll always be there in the tray. You can launch it by keyboard shortcuts. Um, I actually plan on doing a video alone just on the Synapse launcher. So uh, yeah, if you're looking for a way to boost your productivity, Synapse is definitely worth checking out. Number nine is Caden Live. Caden Live is great. This is the program that I actually use to, to create all of the videos on my YouTube channels. It's a free, powerful video editing tool. Now, I've literally, I think I have actually used every free open source video program out there. And in my opinion, Caden Live is the absolute best. It has all the tools that I would need for like cutting, trimming, arranging clips on the timeline, transitions, effects, titles. It has everything I think that anybody could possibly want if they're just doing basic video editing. Caden Live is my go-to video editor. Number 10, Stacer. Stacer is a free, easy to use system manager. Once you install it and you open it up, you'll, you'll come to a dashboard with information about your computer's performance, like the CPU usage, the memory usage, and disk space. I use this part of the application all the time. If my system starts to bog down or whatnot, or I'm having some issues, I go right to this dashboard. It'll tell me my CPU may be, uh, may be uh, clogged or my memory's being used up and stuff like that. So I use this application all the time. Uh, it does other things too, like you can choose which programs to start automatically when you turn your computer on. Uh, it, um, it does a, uh, it'll clean your system, helps you delete unnecessary files like temporary files in your cache to free up space. Uh, you can see which programs are running and how much resource they're using. If something is slowing down your computer, you can stop it right from there. Uh, it'll also uninstall programs, so Stacer makes it easy to remove programs that you no longer need. It's quite a powerful application. The, uh, the interface is simple to use, easy to navigate, it's perfect for beginners. It's got a system cleaner, it cleans up your system, resource monitor, startup manager, I mean it's great. So Stacer is a great tool for keeping your computer running smoothly and efficiently. I use it all the time. So those are my top 10 must-have Linux apps. Thanks for watching.